Hi there! In this video we're going to talk about reflection groups and coxeter geometries. This is one of my favorite parts of the whole course, and I'm very, very glad that we got here. In fact, I'm teaching this course out of a sort of a personal admiration for Donald Coxeter, who we'll talk about in this video, before talking about a dihedral kaleidoscope, the planar kaleidoscopes, and hinting at the existence of the spherical coxeter geometries. Let's get started. So Donald Coxeter was a English-Canadian mathematician. He worked at the University of Toronto from 1936 to 1996. His career spanned over 60 years and hundreds of publications and books, many of which are now considered reference works in their field. He had a, uh, a delightful imagination and a love of symmetry, beauty, shape. Um, I had the pleasure of talking with Siobhan Roberts, the author of King of Infinite Space, a biography of Donald Coxeter, the man who saved geometry. And she had many great anecdotes about him. He was a delightful character. And I'm glad to be able to share some of his mathematics with you today. So let's have a look at some kaleidoscopes. So a dihedral kaleidoscope is a kaleidoscope that has only two sides. Here we're picturing the dihedral kaleidoscope with two mirrors, S1 and S2. So these are two mirrors at an angle of pi by 6. And when we reflect S1 in S2, we get what's called a virtual mirror. So this virtual mirror in blue uh, is that picture of a mirror that you would see if you looked into this shape. And I want to point out how this uh, shape here, P, moves through the dihedral kaleidoscope as it gets reflected across the various sides. So here we have the image of P, S, 1. So we've done one reflection vertically across S1, but now there's four other cells that we can reflect across. So we get here, uh, in the top left, we have the image P reflected across S2. And notice that we can also reflect across this virtual mirror. So when we reflect across the virtual mirror, we wind up here at P S2 S1. Right, so this P gets copied down here. We reflect again and we get P S2 S1 S2. And then we can reflect once more and get P S2 S1 S2 S1. Right, so each chamber of this kaleidoscope is really labeled by a group element in the dihedral group generated by S1 and S2, satisfying the relationships that S1 squared is going to be S2 squared is going to be S1 S2 to the 6, uh, sorry, cubed is the identity. Okay, when we apply this map three times, we get back to where we started from. Beautiful. Now let's get into the notion of a planar kaleidoscope. So these are defined in terms of the Coxeter geometries, which go as follows. So a Coxeter polygon is a polygon in the plane whose angles are all of the form theta is pi by k, right? So if we have theta being pi by k, then we have some kind of collection of mirrors where we have an angle theta here. And we notice that we're dividing up 2 pi by pi by k, so we get a total of n equals 2k parts. So previously we saw that we had um, six parts and we had a exponent three, right? So that's what's going on in this picture. Okay, wonderful. So that's a Coxeter polygon. A Coxeter geometry is a tiling of the plane 
obtained from reflecting in the sides of a Coxeter polygon. So the group of symmetries, GF, is generated by reflections in the sides of F. So we would say that's the Coxeter group arising from the polygon F. Let's have a look at one of these in a very concrete case. So here is our planar kaleidoscope. We have our polygon here, a square, and now we're going to reflect in the sides of that square. So P will get reflected across that vertical axis. Then we can reflect in the horizontal side of the square, and we get the following. And this could be continued reflecting in the sides of those squares indefinitely, and we would get a tiling of the plane by copies of reflections of P. So this is what you would see if you looked into a kaleidoscope with a square cross-section. You'd see an image something like this, and we can identify a fundamental domain that's being reflected across the sides of the axes. Okay, so as the mirrors reflect, this gets copied to fill up the whole plane. So, Coxeter proved that there are only fundamentally four different kinds of kaleidoscopes, and those are the kaleidoscopes with angles that are all pi by two, so we'll write twos here. The kaleidoscope with angles pi by three. The kaleidoscope with angles pi by four, pi by four, pi by two and the kaleidoscope with angles pi by 2, pi by 3, and pi by 6. So we're going to get into the details of how to prove this theorem in class, but I think it's remarkable that the triangular Coxeter geometries all arise from special triangles, right? This is a uh, pi by 6, pi by 3, pi by 2, pi by 2, pi by 4, pi by 3, pi by 3, pi by 3. It's very surprising that there's this connection between the special triangles from trigonometry and the planar Coxeter geometries. In class, we're also going to discuss the notion of a spherical Coxeter geometry, which is where we have a tiling of the sphere by Coxeter polygons. Thank you very much for watching.